the stock you see behind you is Investor Stream. I blocked out the name of the stock so you guys can guess which stock it is as I talk along. So when this company IPO is disruptive technology to the status quo of all competitors, was it, it had an innovative business model, competitive pricing strategy, and also had consistent product and customer service delivery. So at the time where you see the stock going up, it was um, valued at $10 billion of max market cap, and the stock price was at $304.79. And if you held it for the year between 2010-2011, you achieved 400% holding period returns. So anybody know what the stock this is? Raise your hand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Apple? No. Jay? Netflix? Yes. Oh. Netflix. Oh. Somebody's a finance agent. <laughs> <laughs> I talked about Netflix not because it was the greatest stock during that time period, because afterwards it tell me. If you look at the stock, um, the last quarter of 2011, it lost 70% of its value, 76% of its value. Um, their operations suffered greatly when they increased their prices due to the competition they had. Um, for their subscribers, lost a lot of subscribers. The lots of licensing deals they lost with people who provided the content. And also they had a two day website outage. So when we ask ourselves, are, are stocks overvalued or are they just gonna continue to grow? What do we focus on when we look at how companies um, doing, uh, we need to look at the little signals that tell us that some things might not be what it seems. So we overlooked a couple signals when they first missed the first quarter's earning estimates in 2011. And everybody attributed to the competitive atmosphere of, and then the recovery from the recession. And then also their P-E ratio is dangerously high at 60% more than their earnings. So I'm just going to talk about my journey on business council. And I came in business council throughout the year. These are the people I met. These are the people I looked up to. <laughs> they were they embodied everything I, I saw business council in. These people are not just the most social people out there, they're also the most smart people, could be doing business competitions and also achieve high grades in their class. They were also recruiting with the top companies out there. And then in their free time they had a lot of fun with all their friends. <coughs> I looked up to all of them. I remember during my Barbara Jordan George Mitchell interview, I, I Michael Daney asked me, Who's your role model? I said Kelly Rileski because I was an athlete at that time and I, I just wish I had my work life balance like he did. Sophomore year, these are the group of people that I hung out with. And these people, one thing I learned, we all have little problems. <laughs> as perfect as I thought exec was in business council, I knew there was a journey for everyone to achieve or to arrive at where all the exact numbers were, and that journey is not easy. Everybody has flaws in their characters and their dealings with other people and dealing with situations. And throughout this whole year, I don't think anybody stayed the same when they went into the exec, when they came out of the exec. Everybody made some changes to themselves and in the end became a better leader, a better friend. So the third year, my year, this year, <laughs> One thing I learned is to find that balance. It took a little while. <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember me sophomore year or freshman year. I was pretty stressed out. Being involved in a lot of things with this council, being a math major, and trying to do all my business classes ahead of time as well. I was a little burnt out. Went to mental health services a couple times. But in junior year, I realized I need to challenge myself with the responsibilities I, I take on myself and learn to find that balance between all the aspects of my life. Going through that journey, I really know how to become the role models that the first year exec members were to me. So going into next year, what do I want to do on Business Council as president? I think the fundamental thing about Business Council's intrinsic motivation that we all have, we're not here because we have the best programs and flagship programs in the university. We're here because every single one of us want to go on that journey to become the role models we see when we first come into this organization. So being on exec, I want to set that environment for every single person in this organization and really focus on intrinsically motivate every single person in this organization. So it doesn't matter how great our programs are. I mean, those are great things, great side effects of our intrinsic motivation. We must remember the fundamentals of why our organization is good. Focus on our, focus on our 
competitive advantage compared to our other organizations out there. And also, look out for the little signs that might indicate that we're trying to stay away from that. So, I mean, a lot of things change on council. We all grow. Our organization changes, but some things never change over time. Thank you. So my question is more about the internal yeah. council. Um, so I've been on council for three years, and I've seen the culture shift hugely. Like it's, it feels like a different place. And I just kind of want to know your thoughts on next year. Do you see? Do you feel like we've come to like the perfect balance of where we are right now? Do you see it swinging back? Would you like for it to be swinging back to where it was, or do you see even more progression? A lot of things we talk about culture shift, it's almost taboo to talk about a couple of years ago, five or six years ago on business council. Our culture isn't defined by our social life, our culture isn't defined by drinking and partying. Our culture is defined by the friendships we have with each other. So it doesn't matter what we all care about, as long as we focus on that bond we have with each other, then fundamentally that doesn't change, like I said in our speech. And we talk a lot about mentorship. Well, mentorship isn't if you force it and if you tell every single person they have to become a mentor when they are older in this organization, then it seems like a signed role. I mean, that doesn't make people want to help other people out. I, I think freshman year coming in, I, if, you, if you look at a mentorship perspective, Jared is my mentor, Michael Ketty was my mentor, but I don't, I don't see them as my mentors. I think we were became friends because we hung out and we clicked, and friends help out with each other. Friends keep each other in check. Ryan, Jared, Ethan, I mean, my roommates. So if, if we remember that don't superimpose all these roles that we have on council on people and just let people creatively foster things organically, then, then our culture has a shift. Uh, so a year ago, when I decided to run, we sat outside my phones at midnight at those tables by the family statue, and I told you I wasn't going to do it if you didn't do it with me, uh, because you understand the room better than I do. You understand internal counsel better than I do. And you've been the barometer in effect this year to help us do that. Um, but we also had a math test this afternoon. And one of the things that I talked about is that being president is about a lot more than internal counsel. So I want you to talk about the different factors that you think it's going to take um, to be council next year and how you're going to balance those things. All right. So as you can see here, there's a multiple regression. <laughs> multiple regression, yes. With more variables, with more variables. Passion, running for exec, running council, and representing the college the university. Well, if you collect some data points and run a linear regression, we will see that I think these things are very correlated with each other. So I think your model is not really accurate. <laughs> uh, the the covariances into account and have terms like x1, x2, x1, x2, x3 that better describes the model. I think we need to have a F test on this to, to, to make sure that our model doesn't leave out any unexplained errors. Seems like you passed the test. To, to be all serious. <laughs> to be serious. Um, yeah, it's not it's not just focusing on one little area. and. I don't think there's ever a rule on how a president or anybody on exec should carry that role. So just being aware, being alert, and being focused on every single aspect you do, going throughout the entire day, just noticing what's going on around you, that's the mentality you should have going through the year. Don't ever leave one thing for another. Always think of that. I don't know if that's And I don't know if you guys understood from that. <laughs>
who have pointed out that the best way to improve the program isn't by big change and innovation. They said it's the small things. They said it's things like smiling at the McCombs whenever you see them. They said it's stuff like inviting them into the Frito and talking to them and speaking with them. It's about work spotlight and something I'd like to do next year is giving them an opportunity to talk about work updates during their slides. And the second, the second thing, oh, with integration, um, I'm just making a commitment as vice president that regardless of if the org reps are here because they want to be in EDC or if it's because it's their second priority, I'm going to be welcoming and available to them so if they want to be integrated, they absolutely have the opportunity to. And the next part is communication. So I think org reps have this amazing, amazing opportunity. It's essentially a MASO roundtable every single week. And I think it's a great opportunity for them to come together and really talk about the different things that organiz organizations are doing to make themselves better, to break down barriers, and to make sure that they know that UBC is a resource for them. So I want to make sure that they know that and they know that I'm a point person as their VP or as the CP to talk to them and to, to be a resource to talk to them. And my second part is being an external face. So Michael's done an amazing job this year of building relationships in, for UBC in the home and at the tower level. And as vice president, I know it's my responsibility to be that external face for UBC for internal in the homes, going to career services, going to OSL, going to those meetings, and letting them know what UBC is all about. And not only that, being a student advocate for us. I can tell you that I'm passionate and I'm composed and I can be patient and I'm experienced in being at these meetings and I really do care about representing you and representing students. So that's vice president position. And next is the executive board. So three things for sustainability, or for momentum, sorry. Next year we've made so many incredible improvements in the past couple of years and I think that next year is going to be a great year for improvement and sustaining and stabilizing all the basic things that we've done in the past few years. So if we look at BBA legacy and curriculum, those are just a couple of examples. I think the next year we should put a focus on making sure that those amazing ideas are the best they can possibly be. We need to think about, can we make those things better and are they sustainable? Are they going to be here in 10 years? And then on a more personal level, accountability. I want you guys to hold me accountable and I will be accountable for making sure that we have an amazing FYL class next year, for making sure that I'm at all the events I can possibly be at and just that I'm supporting you in everything you're doing in this room and outside of this room. And the most important part is the people. So I love our mission. I love that we represent students and we're an advocate. And I love that we have professional and social and academic programs that let us not only build a community in our organization, but build a community in the homes. And last of all, I love the space. There's a reason why when I say I'm going home after class, it means I'm going to the Frito. And <laughs> the fact that when I'm having a terrible, terrible day, the people that I want to be surrounded by are the people in this room. And when I'm having an amazing day, these are still the people that I want to be with to celebrate it. I think the vice president position is amazing because I, you have this opportunity to balance both professionalism and working with the orgs and being an external face and then also fostering the internal culture of business council and being there to see Bryce grow. And I think Yuzi said, he did say that you, the vice president rallies the troops. I want you to be excited about being in this organization and excited about being in this family. I'm always here, I hope you guys know that. I'm always here no matter what, if you need a smile, a hug, a shoulder to cry on, or somebody be, somebody be excited for all the things that everybody in this room is doing. So, who was it, Kenny. Kenny told me that if he votes for me, he has to know exactly what he's voting for. So I'm telling you that voting for me means voting for somebody who loves McCombs, who loves this organization, who loves its programs, who loves its culture, and most of all, somebody who loves you. So, thank you for this. Does anyone know who this is? Yes, hipster family. <laughs> head and heart. The head and heart. That's right. Perfect. <laughs> <part. laughs> so, but when I was thinking about what exactly is me and what I wanted to talk about in this speech, 
that kept coming back to my mind, the idea of the head and the heart. This kind of duality of what it means to be on exec. So, when I broke it down, like I said, it's the head, the heart. There are two different things. One, the ability to get the job done. You know, actually having the, the path or the ability and the know-how to represent your position, to be on exec, to balance those things. And the heart, the passion, and the care for those around you. Actually knowing every person in this room and looking them in the eye and being able to say, I legitimately care about you and want to do the best for you and the best job I can. So, first off, we have the head. So, I think I bring a little bit of a different perspective to the table. We all know that I was an FYL member my first year. Um, sometimes we do forget, though, I am technically an order rep. I'm not a returning member. So, I have a little different perspective. I sat in the room this year with the other org reps. I know each of them personally. I know the orgs they come from. And I kind of have the perspective of what it means to be a leader in another organization and fit counsel into that. What it means to you know, represent HBSA. What it means to, to have that strong family tie. Or you know, what it means to be ABSA and to have that professional balance with a very large organization. And it's kind of that cognizance and knowing how business counsel can serve each of these massos that I think I bring to the table because of my experience as an order rep. And then secondly, is my experience as HBA exec. So if you didn't know, I did a lot of community service this year. And that's not why I'm running for this position. But I do know how to do a community service event. But more than that, I know how to expand community service to do even bigger and better things. This is something that started small at council, but has grown a great deal this year. We see things like the Business World Cup, we see opportunities to expand and partner with other massos to bond between each other and to do something bigger for the community. And more than that, I also know what it's like to sit in the boardroom for a, for a masso, to make decisions for an organization of three or 400 people. And exec for this organization is like doing that same thing. Three or 400 people in HBA is not even close to 100 people in BC. And then we have the heart. So you see the little pictures on the side. One that may stick out is this one. So this is from informal retreat my freshman year. It's easy proposing to me because we were playing uh, the, sorry, so the, the movie game where you have to sign it out. So this was Wedding Crashers. But if you didn't know why I did counsel, UZ was a big reason. When I was touring business, when I was touring McCombs October of my senior year, UZ was the one leading me. He told me about this great organization that had a little kind of storied history that kind of you know scared me, but at the same time, he told me about this Michael Dell VIP that was coming up in two weeks. We ran into four or five different beautiful, attractive women that all knew Yuzi as a freshman boy. I was blown away. And the reason was this is counsel. Before I even had my mind made up about going to McCombs, I knew I wanted to do this organization. And really, this organization has been what's changed me the most. I've experienced a lot of things. I've experienced great successes. Longhorn Land, that's something amazing. We should all go to it. It was great last year. And I've experienced you know, very narrow defeats. I think we're going to win I am next year, and I want the sugar. And then, you know, these are the people that I, I want to spend my time with. Go to football games, go to Spider House, you know, in and outside of business council. These are the people that I want to actually serve, that I'm passionate about doing great things for. I've been a part of two very different and distinct families that have changed the way I see council. You know, we, the very busy modern family from last year, and, you know, the fun loving Flintstones from this year. And really, I've been a part of two very distinct execs, or no, not execs, sorry, business council family. Not, not Flintstones, not Modern Family, but the 101 of us that make up this wonderful organization. And I want to be able to keep serving and do great things for you. I want to be one of the ones in the front row that leads this organization to where we're going in the future. And ultimately, I want to make my, own very, my very own mark on exec next year. <laughs>
thought about it. I've talked to some people who you know, lost in elections last year, the year before, and they've still become great business council leaders and various or like various meetings. So, you know, committees are a great way to do that, but that's not the only way. Mentorship, that is the biggest way I want to have an impact. Um, I really want to be a parent, if possible. So, um, you know, I know that regardless of the election, win or lose, I know council will do a great job of choosing which of us deserves to be VP and who deserves to be FD, but I'm not going to fade away from this organization. It's the problem. I agree. Um, another thing that I've learned this year is, um, I think that's kind of why you know, running for VP and FD when a lot of my my committees that I've been on don't necessarily line up with that. Something I'd really like to do if I'm on my board is um, basically just branching out and doing different committees that aren't necessarily the one specific executive position. Um, I think you just have so much to offer with an all journalist. So I really like to just be diversified in my committees um, and like content, being a mentor, being a parent is awesome. So maybe I'll, eh, I should probably give somebody else an opportunity, but we'll see. So the duality of the president and vice president position is that the president is really supposed to be the face of business council to the at large, while the vice president is supposed to be the face of business council to the um, A lot of people who serve in the vice president position think there's a lot of room for that part of it really to grow. So what are your ideas to make the vice president position, vice president, grow as the face of council to the columns, um, whether it's through Orbex or other ideas that you have? So. I think that's a great question because I know that I feel like Michael's taking a lot of that, you know, both internal and external. So um, obviously it's going to be a conversation with you, but um, just making sure that the vice president is responsible for being in those meetings, for being in her services, all, all, I think the list of departments, but everybody. Um, and then also something I think we can really grow is letting Izzy sit on those meetings as well if she you know, chooses to. And also if it's, if there's a career services meeting, Pranita should, you know, Pranita should join us. Or just involving more of exec, I think that that's going to make business council much more involved and making sure we're on the same page and really developing that relationship, not only just with one person, but throughout, throughout the organization. Right. And then I think a big area for growth for us is definitely utilizing the passos more. Um, you know, that's kind of been an untapped potential is we have what, 34 Massos that do amazing and wonderful things, and a lot of the times, it seems to be only business council students and like business council hosted events, and it shouldn't be that way. And VP really needs to be one of the people coordinating, getting people out there. So that means going to meetings, uh, going to the individual Masso meetings, that, that's something that we need to look at doing. If it means sitting in on uh, the president's meetings, then that's something we need to do. Uh, regardless, we just need to get more Massos involved in business council, because the business council events should just be business council events. My journey on business council has been much different than most of you in this room. I think it is the most important quality an exec can have is bringing different experiences and views to the table. The view behind me is a zip line in the Caribbean, and I'm going to take you much like on a zip line journey through my <laughs> journey on council and I can see. So first I'm going to start with a different type of zip. So for my interview freshman year, I was very scared. I walked in and you know, I cracked a few jokes, I answered the questions, and I left. And I got a text from my, one of my good friends from high school, Mr. Yuzi Zahn, and it said, great job, check, go fly. <laughs> I looked at my zipper, and sure enough, there was my shirt, and it was hanging out of my zipper. <laughs> that gives you a little about me and how I got my starting council. And then I got on council, and since that time, I've learned how to zip my zipper. And my new journey has included a number of unique experiences, whether it be through Greek life or being a big mentor. Uh, I've learned to do best under pressure. So I do work best under pressure, and that is something that I think I can bring to exec. I can stay calm, and I can be methodical. And I think it's good to take a zoomed out view from that and bring that into exec, especially when making lots of decisions. So I got to put this to work on CFT this year on our four trips. Moving all these people from point A to point B is very important, and it was very difficult, and I got to work in the heat of the moment. So when the going gets tough, I got going. <laughs> so I want to talk about a quote that will describe my journey on exec. Don't let the voice of others' opinions dr drown out your own. Most important, have courage to follow your heart and intuition. My heart and intuition. That's by Steve Jobs, by the way. Um, my heart and intuition led me to this point. And I will stand for what I believe in and exec, whether that be in Senate, in the classroom, or even on Sunday meetings. So, what qualifies me to be a good financial director? 
financial director deals with lots of paperwork and deadlines, so my OCD will come into play here. <laughs> I have my closet organized, my desk organized, and my budget will be very organized. So what I'd like to improve, though, is transparency, opportunities, customized proposals for people, I want to make, or for companies. I want to make sure that companies have as many opportunities to donate, and it makes it easier on CR. And I want to get teachers done the first semester. I'll have that myself. <laughs> so now I want you to take the plunge. Take the plunge with me. After everything else I've explored, I chose to end up here in front of you in this room. I'll be your platform. I'll be your line. And I'll be the driving passion from the beginning to the end of the year. Thank you. Yeah, and my, and my. 
then yes, you do try and work with OSL to get the best solution that you can. If you can, you know, if OSL is willing to work with you to bend the rules this one time, awesome. If not, then you need to work with the chair to see if you can find a substitute, see if you can find something that can work. It may not be exactly what they had in mind, but at the end of the day, like Ed said, the, the relationships that we have with OSL and with the committee chairs are both very delicate things, and we need to make sure that we keep OSL as a priority and work with committee chairs to find the best option for them. So I think it's most important as exec to remember that all the events and all the chairs, they are going a learn, they are going under a learning experience. So it is a learning experience to be a chair. Um, and I think as an exec, it's important to make sure that you're still teaching them. And part of that learning experience may be last minute things where maybe product X isn't available, but product Y is. And making that work is just going to be a learning experience in itself. I think that's the most important like flexibility as a chair. Great. So my question, first order for you all. Um, Taylor touched on the internal aspect of the chairs, and all three of you in your speeches talked about the relationship with SEN, the relationship with OSL, how the financial record is also externally facing. So what are the one or two key traits that you think the financial director has to have in order to perform well in SEN and to have good relationships with the OSL? Um, well, I think it's important to have a passionate face for business counsel because you are going to be on so many different fronts of business counsel. And so whether that be you know, asking extra questions in Senate um, to make sure that people understand that you can bring back information, um, or the Senate uh, member can bring back that information, it's very important um, at all the events to be that passionate face. Um, I think it's honesty with counsel, just being really honest with how things are and how, how they want, I think they need to be honest with you as well. So the honesty back and forth, um, how you can be a better face for them and how they can um, tell you what they want. So one thing, and Jordy kind of touched on it, um, most importantly is being an advocate for council. Um, you have to fight for you know, Senate funding. Senate funding. Uh, you have to fight for um, making sure that we can spend what we need to spend through OSL. Um, but it's being that face in. You know, it's not necessarily going in and fighting with guns and blazing, but it's making sure that you make a stand when you need to make a stand. You know when to back off. But well, at the end of the day, it's being that base. And then lastly, it almost sounds like a cop-out, but most importantly for this role is communication. Um, you know, OSL is not going to like it if you sit there and let an email sit for a day, two days, three days. It's immediate communication, making sure that you get back to them as soon as you can. The same thing with Senate. It's making sure that you are there, making sure that you are talking, you are getting feedback from council, and you're bringing that, communicating that efficiently and effectively to Senate. Um, I do. Uh, so I like. I agree with all they said. Passion is very important, and communication is also what I think is most important. Uh, something I believe is um, really important as well, and something I've had personal experience is um, your image, how the external UT perceives council, because. You're an external face of council. You represent this room, this organization. And you have to, there has to be a lot of weight behind your words. You have to be careful what you say, and you have to be careful how you act. And I think that's a trait that really needs to be accentuated because how people see council is how they see the two faces that the two or three faces that are next on the council. And I really think that's a really important trait. Thank you. Raise your hand if you didn't get a ballot.
and well, A, a if you taught me that I wanted to be a marketing major, possibly. Um, but I guess the way he did that was just about passion, right? Like he kind of threw, the way he taught the class and the way that he spoke to us was he threw down a lot of walls and a lot of stigmas. And I think that's kind of um, something that I have always just in, like, have to, okay, let me try again. Um, he threw down walls and stigmas about marketing um, that I think are the same kind of walls and stigmas that we have to fight in our lives, like in general, all the time. Um, and so I guess he taught me to speak with passion and um, that it doesn't matter, like if you do it with passion, like money will follow or recognition will follow or happiness will follow. And so you just have to kind of recognize what drives you when you're in your because if it doesn't, then all those other things I mentioned uh, are not going to fall. Please to announce the 2012-2013 Academic Director of the Business Council, there! Okay, so I kind of had a hard time thinking what to say, and I thought I would come up with some gigantic call because I... I've learned to play golf the past three years, so I'm so pretty new to it, but I really, it's made a really big impact on my life, and I really think that it's a very good analogy for counsel and for me. So, there's three parts. Learning to play is the first part. You have to work hard within yourself. You have to look at your side yourself and really play mentally. Golf is a mental game. The hardest thing to do in golf is to control things between two years. So, I feel like for counsel, it's a lot like looking inside yourself and finding that intrinsic motivation. Pay attention to the little things. But the little things make counsel really great. And in golf, everything you do can contribute to where the ball lands. Office hours, attendances, family points, they're really, really small things that I think help us make us really, really great. And I think that Streamline and Made Awesome can really contribute to a really great counsel. Remember the tradition and the history. So golf has a really, really rich history, starting in Scotland. <coughs> Business Council, like golf, has an incredible history. And I want to keep it going with FYL, ABC, and really bringing people back to nurture the culture that we have. The second part is playing with composure. You play to learn, not to win. So over the past year, I've learned a lot. I've learned being admin assistant, being an MES committee member, and BD legacy co-chair. I've learned by hanging out with some of the greatest people I've ever met in my entire life. And they're older than me and they've taught me so much about myself and the people around me. Remain calm and play with short-term memory. Basically in golf, if you hit a bad shot, you have to forget. Because if you don't forget, the rest of your game is going to be terrible. And so the thing about being an exec member is sometimes your feelings make it hurt and sometimes you may have to hurt others' feelings, but you do it for counsel. And in the end, you have to have a short-term memory because you can't hold grudges and you can't take things personally. You have to establish confidence and trust yourself. All those little things I talked about, when you're swinging the club, you can't think about them all at once. It'll just confuse you. So when we do the big events, it's not about how many office hours you attended. It's about what you're doing now for council as a whole. And finally, my personal favorite, enjoying the game. I've learned to enjoy a game that has caused so much frustration to people over the years. And the biggest part has to do with these three parts. Keeping an open mind, being flexible, being able to grow as a person. When you hit a bad shot, your best shot can come right after it. So keep your mind open to new change. Play with the people you love and play because you love the game. These are the most applicable to counsel. I love golf and it's really hard to love it. But when you do, Playing it is probably one of the most incredible experiences you can ever have. And counsel is really, really hard, and there's so many things about exec that are really difficult. But I get to play with the people I love and play because I get to work for the 100 best people on campus. So, just to end with a quote from Ben Hogan, as you walk down the fairway of life, you must smell the roses, or you only get to play with them. <laughs> Okay, so when I was the admin assistant in the shoes, I kind of 
viewed my position not just as planning tickets and events, but rather as I to be a political council to spread the camaraderie across, across all um, you know, committees and members. And even despite those efforts that you'll carry out as admin exec, you're still going to run into people who feel kind of excluded from that camaraderie. And what would you do as a leader to help those people and make sure that camaraderie is spread across council, that everyone's feeling loved, and that you are being the glue that holds this council together? So I think the biggest thing that I've noticed over the past year is that if I feel like someone was noticed, or maybe someone was slipping through the cracks, then the exec member did come up and say, hey, why don't you guys do this? And I feel like I became a lot more confident in that um, second semester. And I think it has to do with really finding someone like a Kevin who can be really, really, really fun and just say, Kevin, why don't you go have fun with this person? And, <laughs> and now everyone is looking at Kevin. <laughs> but I think that it's really great to find someone that really connects with a lot of different people. And I feel like I do that sometimes, but sometimes there's not people that I click with. And I think finding the people that click the most and saying, why don't you kind of spread this? it starts with one person and I think that's really the biggest part is finding that person that you know can click with someone that's being left out and really bring them back to the group because I think that's the best way to do it. So last question. Um, you'll be entering the executive board as the youngest and least experienced member. How do you plan on overcoming that deficit and moving forward to be an equal member of the time? Um, so I really feel like I can be a very mature person, and I've kind of felt that way a lot of my entire life, but I think that we all have things that we really want to focus on, and for me as a person, um, exec was the thing that I really wanted to focus on, and it, for personally, the way that I saw myself contributing most to council was being on exec, and I felt like being on exec is really learning from others and being aware of your own weaknesses and working on them. And so I think that over the past two months, I've become cognizant of a lot of things about myself that I didn't realize. And moving forward, I just have to learn from others, listen, and really kind of understand that when I'm in the room sitting at a table with nine people, they're the same as me, and that we can all contribute equally, but in different ways.
amazing members of this organization. So know that I learned from my chairs and my committees, and seeing that in all of you is what's, it, it's really what gets me going when I stand up here. It's when Sabika finishes her piece of publicity and she's like, thank you for helping me. And I'm like, I didn't do it, you did it. Or Kevin comes down here for the first time and he's just all riled up about CFT. It's, it's that that gets me going and that's why I'm standing in front of you. So really, it's such an honor and privilege to be down here and I can't thank you enough for all that you've done. Um, so let's take this journey and make next year amazing. yourself for the coming year, what you want to see yourself develop so that they can help you. Okay, so um, I've really found my niche and my, uh, my, myself kind of. Um, I think what Business Council is going to teach me is more of how I interact with individuals when I'm in a tough situation. And I think that's what's going to give me the, that's what Business Council is at. The entire role is going to give me the most stuff is just dealing with situations in a calm and really good fashion while presenting yourself um, as a leader and not being, um, like sticking to your morals and values, but really, really expanding on that, yeah. So now that we've got the serious question out of the way. Um, I don't know if you remember from last year, but there's a tradition if you're running unopposed for careers. Um, so my question is, I want you to name as many career schemes as you can, going back to as far as you can. Yes. Oh, yeah. hmm? Name the people too. People? Yeah. Okay. Alex Hodges, he had like a live theme. <laughs> yeah. That works. Yeah, I um, said it once. Okay. <laughs>
So as a total controls director, you know, I'm going to fight for you. You know, I may not be Fernanda Alvarez, but I am incredibly fair. <laughs>
um, <laughs> why I qualify, um, and some of my ideas for why I you know, qualify to be your professor next year. Um, so just quickly cover some of the qualifications. Last year I was a publicity committee member, and I'm currently the chair. Uh, so I've worked two years in a row directly with the uh, promotions director, so I have a good grasp on the work they do. Um, and it's in the cost of talking about leadership and management skills. Um, and then the second thing is uh, for SCI, I was the corporate relations director. Um, the one really uh, the big full way that I've had of this is um, working with the executive board um, of, eight, eight, of eight people to make decisions for an organization uh, as a whole. Uh, that's, that's probably the biggest learning uh, that I had out of this experience. Um, also, uh, it was great to lead an uh, organization and a group of people. The third thing is the desire to lead the business council and um, all 100 members, as well as myself, uh, grow and succeed as a group together and also individually. Uh, when, I, when I first came to council, uh, it was the exec board that um, that really brought me in, helped me succeed, grow, um, and they challenged me. And that's something I want to give back. Uh, it's been the same this year with the exec board also. Um, and then, just I want to cover uh, one thing I did that I had. Um, it's been a hot topic, is the elected rep position. Um, just really quick, I want to I want to reform the elected rep position. Um, they are elected reps for a reason, and they, they need to represent their name. Um, we are, as business council, the voice of the homes. The elected reps are that position. They get the voice from their, from their classmates, and they bring it to us. Um, and so what they need to do is be held accountable for their name. Um, I have more on my application on all of these ideas. But the big thing I wanted to talk about was a discussion I had with most of you, and that's the principle of what we do, what we make our decisions based off of. And that's love or fear. Um, we do things out of the love of it or out of fear of the consequences. Uh, and when I sat down to think of why I wanted to run for exactly what I was back here, it wasn't out of the fear of a similar resume um, if I didn't do it or fear that I might have a legacy what I'm up to. Uh, it was the love for the organization, it was the love for the people, uh, especially a love for the future of what I see this and comes to doing. And so I want to sit down, when I make every decision for this organization, I want to remember that I'm doing it for the love of everyone in this room, um, the love of our mission, um, and the people here. And so thank you for your time.
I'm pleased to announce your 2012-2013 Promotions Director, Sam Davis. Being able to look outside of your own bubble will benefit you even more. 
Um, and I think that's something we really need to learn, and it's a change we've been making. Um, it's kind of like an interview where Seth agrees with me, and now I'm turning it into a straight. <laughs> when it comes to picking video of the week. Second of all, I wanted to actually make people other than me laugh. No offense. <laughs> 